Okay, okay, we're freestyling this one, um, recording on my phone, so apologies for any background noise on this uh, rather loud and very sunny morning here in Rome. Apologies for any stuttering, any rambling, which is uh, more than likely than not to occur. And of course, apologies for the moment my cat Golda will inevitably pipe up and decide to say hello as she uh, sits restlessly behind my laptop right now. You know what, our, our universe is descending into entropy as we speak and so is my living room. So who knows what's going to happen? Anyway, welcome back, my friends, to The Great Everything, an exploration of our world through pop, culture and philosophy. As always, I am Patrick, a finance lawyer who saw the light and quit to dedicate my life to art, donuts and transformation. Now, I'd like to take a moment to talk about that a little. Art, donuts and transformation is a concept I've uh, nonchalantly mentioned here before. I even did an episode on it, appropriately called Art, Donuts and Transformation which uh, you can check out if you are so inclined. Now, one of the things I find most irritating about the internet these days is the proliferation of these half-baked and half-assed self-help models and lifestyle brands. They all sound the bloody same, and they all sound bloody stupid. Broadly speaking, I found two categories of this nonsense. Now, the first, and maybe the least offensive, is the sort of positive energy, drink green tea and meditate, be kind to yourself style, which, uh, I mean, really, it tells you everything and nothing. It's a bit wishy-washy, it's not very informative. And I don't think it even really works if you're the kind of person who actually needs self-help. I mean, be kind to yourself is, is great advice to someone who already knows how to do that. But if you've ever struggled or been in a tough spot in life, you know that there are just moments where it's hard to even understand what that means, how to be kind and good to yourself. And also this attitude of look around, breathe, and be grateful for how wonderful the world is. Well, yeah, of course, I mean, I agree, and I applaud the positivity of it all, but, but life isn't just a blessing. There's also a struggle. And... I feel that this kind of green tea detox lifestyle model just doesn't acknowledge that. And I guess it has something to do with who the target audience is. And I'm thinking it's mainly rich, possibly attractive housewives who do yoga. And for whom life really is that simple, maybe? maybe I don't know. I've never been a, a rich, attractive housewife. But... It just doesn't work for me. And look, I don't think that there's anything inherently wrong with that positive message. In fact, there's not. It's just maybe there's a bit too much being grateful for this wonderful world and too little taking responsibility for making the world wonderful. It's not wrong. It's just bullshit. <laughs> On the opposite, but equally inane end of the spectrum, there's the other self-help model, you know, the, the lifestyle of just productivity and success be productive this one's all about you know the the shallow life hacks and tips that can make your life better if only you decide to, to implement this stupid morning routine so it's usually stuff it's almost military style okay so wake up at five boys and girls and drink coffee and immediately take a cold shower then drink coffee again while you make a list of things you will do that day lists are very important and then do press ups while you eat avocado and also drink coffee and yeah, they, they always talk about coffee is it one thing okay i mean you guys yeah and i literally mean you right now stop it stop with this coffee fetish it is boring you are being boring. Right, so you know I live in Rome, right? Rome in Italy, not uh, Georgia. I think there's a Rome in Georgia. No, the, the Rome I live in is in Italy. I've lived in Italy about 15 years in total. Now, you know what they do in Italy? They drink a lot of coffee. And some might say that the coffee we drink in Italy is much better tasting than anything you're going to find almost anywhere, with a few exceptions like Turkey. Now, you know what they don't do in Italy? Constantly talk about coffee. You always go, oh my God, I love coffee. Mmm, coffee. Oh my God, don't talk to me until I've had my coffee in the morning, lol. Endless memes about, you know, me with coffee, me without coffee. Stop it. Why would you advertise yourself at your most uninteresting? You're just being boring.
Anyway, yeah, morning, morning routine, productivity tips for a successful life. Great, okay, yeah. You take that cold shower, drink that coffee, you, you, you're going to be Elon Musk in no time. Anyway, from the inane to the painfully stupid and inane, these lifestyle methods, they do have a couple of things in common. First of all, they're amazingly shallow. It's just superficial, you know. The positive energy, green tea lifestyle, it never actually asks you to understand what it's advocating. You know, the chemistry of it, or even just the psychology of it. It's just, you know, breathe. And even the meditation angle, you know, it keeps telling you meditate. But if you want meditation to bring you real benefits, it's a pretty serious business. You know, meditation, it takes effort. It requires dedication. And yet this lifestyle model treats it like, you know, it's just something you, you throw in between a detox smoothie and a pedicure. You know, meanwhile, the, the productivity and success guys, they don't even pretend to be anything other than some optimization mechanism. And it's never about actually understanding anything about the world or even oneself. It's just like, you know, it's just one of, one of the lists it tells you to write. What's missing in this world view where everything feels, you know, like a shitty meditation audiobook or like an exercise app for nerds? What's missing here is depth and variety and culture. It's culture that's so important. It's who we are. Culture is what makes us different from all the other animals. The, the fact that we have the ability to record and communicate our thoughts and our feelings across so many more mediums than just, you know, what animals have, which is body language, chemical cues. We have more than that. We have literature and art and music and dance and language and architecture. So where is that in these lifestyle models? Where is the culture in these life hacks? Where is the acknowledgement that culture makes your life Life richer, culture makes you smarter, and above all, it makes you less fucking boring, which you are. Not you specifically, but probably you specifically too. But you know what I'm saying? I mean, we are all slightly boring. Can we maybe do better than taking a cold shower and drinking green tea? So, you know, I have my own lifestyle recipe, which is what this show boils down to. My own method for self development. Every day, a little art donuts and transformation art that's the highbrow stuff you know it's high culture it's fine dining it's the kinds of activities that require you to push yourself a little you know make an effort so that you can get the full benefit you know read up on the context understand what's going on you're listening to classical music or reading Dostoevsky or drinking a particularly sophisticated wine or taking a trip to the local art gallery or museum I mean, you can enjoy all these without making the effort, but usually that tiny bit of struggle to understand the history, the context, the structure of the art form, or, you know, if we're talking food and drink, training your palate so it's able to pick up the subtle balance of flavors, all that effort really pays off. You know, the same way it pays off when you put in the work to plow through the first 150 pages of a really great novel. You might be bored at first, but at the end, that last page, you can exhale and you say, oh my God, that brother's Karamazov really was something, wasn't it? What I call art, which is this broad category of highbrow culture, is essentially, it's fundamental. As, as part of a balanced and well-rounded life because, you know, the great stories and experiences of our human species, they're encapsulated in the work of these truly great artists and music musicians and chefs, of course. These people are able to distill what's universal about these experiences and deliver them in a package that's truly enriching. There are you know, few moments in any life that are as powerful as deeply engaging with a, a painting by, you know, a Velasquez or, or Picasso or, I, I don't know why it's just Spanish painters that are coming to mind now. Caravaggio, there, there's one that's not Spanish. And, you know, that's the sort of personal growth angle I'm talking about. You know, if you want to have a richer mind, a richer cultural life, do all these things. But if you want to think of it in the cynical terms of just success, look at it this way. Imagine I describe to you a guy who's, you know, ordinary in looks, ordinary in as far as their job is concerned. They're decently paid, not too well, not badly. They're not a bad guy, not particularly good either. Just, you know, generally nondescript. Not much stands out about this guy. 
except for the fact that he has absolutely zero interest in reading, in music, in art, in history, in philosophy, just culture, right? Zero. Now, I think you'd have an opinion about that. You'd think that this guy is limited somehow. And say, maybe, you know, he's really active. He goes jogging, he rides a mountain bike, he skateboards, whatever. But I still think that no amount of skydiving is going to change the fact that you feel that this guy is somewhat limited. That there's something missing that is really quite significant to us as, you know, as empowered, interesting individuals. On the contrary, now let's say I describe someone who's almost identical to this guy, except he has zero interest in skydiving, doesn't work out, nothing physical or outdoorsy. But he's deeply passionate about art and literature and music, so much so, you know, his friends ask him to take them to the museum so he can be their tour guide. This is someone they look up to in order to learn something. Now, these are extreme cases, of course, and there's no denying that this second guy, he's also limited in a very important way, you know, because variety is important in life. But I'm trying to say that there's something about having a cultural interest that we all acknowledge is enriching, is good, and that the absence of it is something we look at with a little suspicion in other people, but even in ourselves. You know, you think about the fact that you've never read a Shakespeare play, and a part of you cringes. There's no part of you that is proud of that. Whereas, you know, when I think of the fact that I've never, you know, gone water skiing, no, I have done that. I've never done what? I've never climbed a mountain. Yeah, there's a part of me say, you know what, I should do that. But uh, that's just because, you know, to tick a box. But you don't feel about it the same way you feel about not having read Shakespeare or not understanding jazz. So art, you don't have to be an expert in this or that ancient poet or jazz musician. But if you can, at the very least, find a little time every day on your commute or while cooking or taking a bath, just to engage in what I call art, you know, read a poem and think about it, listen to some great music, look up a Renaissance painting, but try to understand what's going on, try to fit it into your framework of how the world works and what matters. That's a fundamental ingredient to living a better life. You know, yesterday for me, I listened to Duke Ellington's Live at Newport, 1956, one of the greatest jazz concerts ever recorded. And that was the art I spent my day doing. It was just, you know, 45 minutes. That was more like an hour. But that made my day a little bit better than it would have been. Then, of course, there's donuts. Donuts are the lowbrow. There are gut pleasures. They're the, the things that give us that immediate satisfaction, you know, the strong visceral impact. I'm not talking low quality, though, because th there's a difference between eating a truly phenomenal burger and going to McDonald's. But these gut pleasures, they're also a fundamental part of life. Because sometimes you don't want to think, you don't want to make that effort, and in those times, all that works is a dumb comedy or, you know, a Green Lantern comic book or an episode of some mindless TV show you love. You know, right now I'm watching Black Sails on Netflix. It's not great. But I love it. It's not The Wire, but it's fun and I enjoy it. Sometimes you just want some fun pop music or, you know, a big tub of Ben and Jerry's, you know, with peanut butter sauce on top. A day without some of that is not a day worth living, I think. Because without it, you're lacking variety. You're, you're just as boring as the guy who doesn't care about culture. Except you're worse because you're also a bit of a snob. You know, what are you, too good for Star Wars? So every day, along with your art, I think it's important that you find a little time for some donuts. Yesterday, my donut was, um, I went to see Avengers Infinity War. Oh man, was I glad I saw it. I really need to talk about that at some point because um, it was some fun shit. Well, fun is probably not the right word, but it was definitely donut and it was good. And finally, transformation. Uh, I guess transformation is what we're all about at the end of the day. Because we're engaged in this process of constant change, you know, of transformation. We can't stop it. What we can do, though, is try to do our best to evolve, to change, to transform in a direction that is useful, you know. And I don't mean useful cynically, I mean it in a broader sense. And now, you know, engaging in art and donuts, that's a part of this transformation, that positive change. You know, that process is transformative in itself because you're self-improving by engaging in art and donuts. But I think we also need to make a conscious effort about what it means to become better humans and to take responsibility 
for making ourselves better, for that transformation. So we can have a positive impact on the people and the world we interact with. So every day, we need to take some time to think about what that means, what it means to build that character. And it can be as little as, you know, taking an ethical rule, a quote from a philosopher, and just, you know, giving it some thought, trying to understand how we can apply that to our lives practically. Or it can be engaging in constructive debate, not a shouting fest, but constructive conversation about some political topic. Because you're influencing people by doing that. Or at the very least, you're learning to change your own mind. You're, you're involved in dialogue, and that's always transformative. In fact, dialogue, dialectic, is how the philosopher Hegel thinks the world progressive. You know, thesis, then antithesis, its opposite. And through the, the dialogue between those two, you reach the, the synthesis, the the middle ground, of, so to speak. So that's important. You know, you can also just apply critical thinking. That's transformative. You know, you take a current issue, you think about it critically, so you make sure that your judgment is fair and accurate, and not clouded by you know some gut emotion or tribalism. So you don't contribute to polarization. That's transformative. That's a good deed. Or you can just do, uh, you know, a good deed in the classical sense, you know, help a lady cross the road. I don't know, that was the dumbest example I could think of. But when you do that good deed, whatever it is, try to understand what it is that makes that deed good. What's the principle that underlies it? Extrapolate a rule from the action and try to figure out ways that the principle can be applied outside of the individual action. Basically... It's about thinking ways to become a better human and then acting upon those ways. That's what transformation is. So I guess that's my lifestyle recipe for good living. You know, every day, a little art, donuts and transformation. And it's not that difficult. It certainly works for me. You know. So how about you try it out? And of course, I'll do my best to help you. You know, I'll bring you episodes here on The Great Everything that tie those angles together in various ways that provide an introduction to the topics, you know, in Art, Donuts and Transformation, the, the ideas, stories and culture that make humanity great, as I like to refer to it, without ever losing sight of the fact that donuts, they're a part of that too. So try it out. Art, Donuts, Transformation, every day. What are yours going to be today? Let me know. The podcast you just heard was recorded with Anchor. If you want to make your own, download the Android or iOS app completely free from anchor.fm slash podcast. That's anchor.fm slash podcast.